So we have a master detail parent-child relationship between department and employees. And the first thing you want to do is go into the relationship definition and enable this accessor and also copy this name, uh, the employees collection. So this basically means that we want to enable us to fetch from the department all the employees. Okay. Now, once we do this, we can go to our page and the first thing we'll do is define a new data type. And this data type is going to contain information about the department, so it's going to be based on a fetch of a single department. We'll choose the ID and the department name, but we also want information from the employee's collection. This is the accessor you saw before, and once we enabled it, we're able to select the additional fields over here. Okay, so we selected a few of those, and then we can go ahead and uh, give a new name to our data type, something uh, meaningful. Uh, maybe like a department type, for example. Okay, so we have a new type. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to define a variable that will be an array of that type. In fact, not just an array, it's going to be an array data provider. Okay, so this is our department array data provider, and it's based on this data type, and the ID is the key field here. Okay, and now that we have the variable, we need to populate it. So we'll define an event on our page. When we enter the page, we're going to create a new action chain. Uh, we'll call it fetch data, for example. And then when we go into this action chain, we're going to first invoke our REST endpoint to fetch our department, or basically all the departments. So we're going to go to the departments and fetch all of them. Okay. Now, when you, by default, fetch department, it just brings department. So what you want to do is you want to expand the accessor, the employee's collection. So this is the expand parameter, which we assigned to the name of the accessor. And then we're just giving a meaningful name to this fetch operation. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the results of this fetch and assign them into the ADP that we defined. So over here on the left side, we have the fetch. Since we are expanding the uh, accessor, we'll also have the employee's collection over there. And on the right side, we'll have a structure of data that is very similar, maybe just some of the fields. So we're going to take the items from the left, put it into the data, and make sure to set the reset to empty. So every time that we fetch, we clear the array and put the new values in here. So now we're finally ready to design our page. So we'll take a table, put it on the page, we're not going to use the wizard to bind it, we're binding it manually to our ADP. So the minute that we do this, you can already see we have five rows in here. Then we can choose which fields to actually show, which columns, and we can add an extra column, um, and we'll call this one employees. Now in each one of those columns, we will want to show something, so we're going to take and bring in a text um, over to this new column. Okay. And to make it a little bit easier to understand stuff, I'm going to bring a text also on top of the department. Okay, this is going to make our code view a little bit easier to understand. Okay. Um, so what we're going to show you now is that if I actually go and run the page, I want to show you what's happening in the console so you would see uh, the data that we're fetching. So we'll go to the console. And if you look in here, you would see that we're actually creating the array and assigning it. And you can go in and you can see the structure of the array. So each item has this department, the ID, and then an employee's collection, which is an array of itself. And inside this array, you can find the various fields, such as the name and the salary, for example. So this is the structure that we're bringing into the page. Now it's just a matter of arranging the page to actually show it. So to do this, we're going to change the content of this template to contain um, the name of the employee, for example. Okay, um, But we don't want to show just one employee, we want to show all the employees in this department, so we're going to surround it with a for each operation. The for each is going to run on an array. So what we need to provide here is an array, um, which is what we have up here Okay, for each row, so the current row, we're going to have an employees collection, and inside the employee collections, okay, uh, there are a bunch of items, so dot items. So this is an array that returns all the rows for employees. And then we can basically take the same structure of how we refer to data and use it over here. 
uh, to say that we want to show, for example, data dot name of the employee. And if we want to be fancy, we can also concatenate um, a space and then concatenate the salary field. So this allows us to define the structure of what we want to show in the for each. So for each row of employee in a department, we're going to show these details. Now there's one thing that might happen, there's some department that don't have employees. So we only want to show it if we have employees. So we are doing a surround with, or surround with if, basically. And we're going to check that we actually have something in this array. Okay, so that's our structure. And you can now see, if you go into design mode, our page and the data over here. Now you can go ahead and format it. For example, if you want each share employee in a separate row, you can add a um, line break at the end over here, and that would arrange your page a little better. All right, and that's basically your page. If you go over and run your page now, you'll see exactly what you're seeing here in the um, preview. Uh, we'll do a refresh here just to show you. Each department that has employees is going to show the same employees inside the row in the last column, um, basically based on our fetch, and that's it.